I want this, this is my outcome, this is my goal. Like how bad do you want? Do you want as bad as breathing? To make a real change, you have to hate your life. I'm 40 years old now and I'm hungry as I've ever been. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. <laughs> I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Ed Mindlet. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. Keeping promises that you actually make to yourself. In other words, self-confident people really are self-trusting people. How bad do you want your goal right now? I think there's a lot of people in the world today because it's a really niche thing to talk about. I want this, this is my outcome, this is my goal. Like how bad do you want? Do you want it as bad as breathing? Do you want it as bad as anything you ever wanted in your life? And if you calibrate it at the highest enough levels, what I found is the people that are the hungriest, they find a way. When you know why you want something, when it's desperation, the power of being desperate is something that most people avoid. They think desperation is a weakness. And I'm here to tell you, desperation is one of the most powerful emotions you could possibly possess because when you're desperate, you find reserves and reservoirs of ideas, talents, and a strength that you don't know you have when you find yourself in a desperate situation. So ironically, the one thing most people avoid in their life, hunger, which is caused by being desperate, when you're starving, you become desperate. Think of somebody who's starving on the street. They've got to, how resourceful would you get if your children were literally starving and you had to feed them, right? So the number one thing we need more than anything to win is hunger, which comes from a state of desperation. Yet we're constantly trying to comfort ourselves in the real world to avoid the state of being desperate. And I'm telling you that I think you need to embrace desperation again in your life. Like, do you want it so bad that you're desperate for it. See, in a fight, you show me two people. This is why it's so hard to repeat as a champion in the fighting game. Because you show me someone who's up and coming who's hungry for that title, who's never had it before, who can taste it, who knows if they win that belt, their whole life's gonna change, they're gonna be champion of the world, all the endorsements, all the money, all their family life, all their parents' lives are gonna change. You show me somebody chasing that hungry for it against someone who's just trying to hold on to a title, and that's why most of the time the challenger beats the champ. It's hard to repeat as a champion because the hunger goes down just a little bit. The greatest athletes, the Kobe's, the Brady's, the Jordan's of sports have a way of feeding their hunger all the time and increasing it. What separates them isn't just their work ethic, isn't just their talent, although those things matter, isn't just they practice more. What separates them is they're just hungrier. They somehow find a way as they climb up the ranks and win championships to get even hungrier for more, where 99% of the athletes lose just a little bit of their edge once they get that first championship, that first pro contract, that first big amount of money, that first world championship. They just lose their hunger a little bit. And then there's the elite, they get hungrier. It feeds the beast. To make a real change, you have to hate your life. Good is the enemy of great. If you're good, you're good. It would be nice to have more, but you're not willing to do the crazy, scary, painful things that require to get great because you're good. You need to realize, if only for a few moments, that you hate your life. You hate it. You're capable of more, way more. This is nowhere near, this is nowhere near maxing out. This is nowhere near the max of your capabilities. You should hate that. You need to hate that. And then you make a powerful decision to change. So if you've ever been to a Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within event, the three and a half day event, his most powerful exercise that he does is his Dickens exercise. And what he has you do is write down your limiting beliefs. He has you write down what are the things that, that you do that is holding you back, the belief system you have that is holding you back, the things that you know you need to act on that you're not doing, why is it that you're not doing it, and what is it holding you back from accomplishing? And that's a great thought exercise, but unless it's emotional, you're not gonna take action, right? You know it, 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 fixing that would be nice, it'd be good, it'd be nice, right? Yes, but you still like your life. It's the problem, you don't hate your life, you're not desperate enough to make that happen. You can think, well, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, I'll do it next year. No, you need to hate your life right now or that thing will never happen. And so what Tony has you do is, you take those three limiting beliefs 
and then you project forward and it takes you down, I think, five years and 10 years and 20 years into the future. So now you imagine your life five years into the future. That thing that you're afraid to do, that thing that you have in your head, that limiting belief of yours, you haven't fixed it yet. What's the result? What happens? What do you look like in five years that you still haven't done the thing? What happens to you in five years? And then in 10 years and then in 20 years, it takes you deeper into the pain basically each time that your life is terrible, right? You never fix this thing. You never chase that opportunity. You never go after the thing you know you're capable of. And he puts so much pain on you through this exercise, blast, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. He puts so much pain on you but then it forces you to want to make the change right now. And then he'll snap you back. The, the idea isn't let's stay negative forever, right? As entrepreneurs, we don't, we don't want to do that. I don't want to be negative forever. It's using negativity and negative forces in a really acute sense. In these little pockets, these little moments to force you forward, to force you into action. Because when you hate something, you're going to change it. When you've hated something in your life, it's an immediate change. I need to make that change immediately. But again, when you're good, you're good. You don't do anything about it. And so whatever it is that you want out of life, you have to be desperate to go and chase it down. You have to. And the only way to do that is to hate your current situation. Now, I don't want you waking up every day and saying, I hate my life, I hate my life, I hate my life. That's not, that's not healthy. But again, in these moments, in these windows, where you need to make a decision, where you need to be bold, when you need to act, when you need to summon the courage that you have. It has to be important enough to you. And you get that by thinking about all the reasons why your life right now sucks and you need to make a change. Don't get down in this narrow hole that just keeps getting darker and darker and darker. It's like, no, this sucks and I'm, I'm a hero. I'm a badass. I wanna max out. I wanna go and create that much better life for myself rocket fuel here we go so i'm going to give you a three-step process that you can use to apply this to your business and your life step number one write down three changes that you want in your life life and business three changes what are the three things that you want what are the three things that you look at where you are right now and you want to be somewhere else things that that are that are just good that you've been coasting on that you said you wanted to change for the past five years and you're still here you're still here you haven't made progress you say it's important but you haven't done anything on it what are those three areas write it down Step number two, inflict some pain. What do you hate about your life right now in these three areas? Get dark, get negative, get painful, hate. Why do you hate your life in these three areas right now because of that thing? The reason why you've let it go for five years or however many years in your head, the reason why it's gone this long is because you don't hate your life enough. You like it just enough that you keep doing it. You like it just enough that you haven't made the change. So now, for the next few minutes, inflict some pain. You hate it. You hate that this thing hasn't happened yet. Why? Write it down. Be specific, be clear. And then number three, what's the plan of massive action to change it? I'm not gonna leave you on a negative. That's not what this is all about. That's not what Believe Nation does. What's your plan? Massive action, this thing you wanna change. You've wanted to change it for a while. You've inflicted tons of pain on yourself to say this has to change. Look at it. I hate my life now because of these three things. Awesome. What is your plan for massive action starting right now to make immediate progress and momentum on those three things? Write it down. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, question of the day, I wanna know what's the number one thing, number one thing that you hate in your life right now? Let me know in the comments below. This has to change. I don't think that anyone should ever accept where they're at in life. Doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you've already hit some really big goals because when you lose your hunger, you lose your edge, and it is as simple as that. Now here's the deal, if we humans don't have something meaningful and challenging to work on, we all tend to get lost pretty darn fast. And I'll tell you something else, we can go to some pretty dark places. At least I know that's true for me. So there is some nuance to this and it's really important that you get it. So you can be 10,000% grateful for what you have right now. You can uh, smell the roses, so to speak. And you can be super hungry and psyched about what's coming up next. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. And it's really important that you get that fact in your noggin. Hunger doesn't also just come with, with the youth. I'm 40 years old now, and I'm hungry as I've ever been. Seriously? Yeah, still. S tell me why. Because like, there's, I, I look at like, all the, the things that I still need to do, 
and there's still so much more. So as if I'm starting from wow. zero again. Wow, so that hunger's still there. That yeah. fire's still in the belly. And the more I travel, the more I learn that I, I know very little about the world. And I, and I become you know, hungry to be, become that student and, and embrace and absorb culture and absorb uh, and, and learn that I need to educate on all these things. And it's all gonna, it's all gonna reverberate into my business, whatever my business might be. Because the way, the way I am as a person, I think this is also part of my success is that the minute I feel something that's, that's like really powerful, inspirational to me, mm -hmm. the, the, the minute I feel that way, I'm immediately going into my head and how can I construct this in a way to share it with the world? And I share, I share that feeling in different mediums, through music, through fashion, through the live experience, through different products, through whatever it might be that all come from this abundant amount of inspiration. And I can only get that by being around people, connecting with people, um, seeing different things that just like enlighten me. And, uh, and then, like I said, it goes right back to you me. You see it? Yeah, me going, I need, I, I still got so much more to go, you know, and it, and it drives me. If you wanna know Ed Milet's thoughts on the number one success killer in the modern world, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. There's a thing in our culture that's killing our culture. It's killing success.